welcome to the Irish in the UK and well done to Henry McGlade for his show. Now coming up tonight, St Lawrence's GA Club in Manchester are preparing their underage team to travel over to Ireland for a footballing weekend. We'll be catching up with the Coventry Irish Society and find out how they are doing these days. But first up, we're off to the Liverpool Irish Centre for the John O'Connell concert. John has been playing music throughout the UK for over 30 years and he always plays to a full house. It's the young spots and special Bringing my baby back I was about 14 and 15 A couple of friends were playing And my brother taught me some guitar chords And then um, started getting into like folk music Stuff like that And then got interested in five string banjo Bluegrass music And it, it kind of grew from there really Left school No qualifications <laughs> Um, but that might have been a good thing for me because it, it kept me on the road of just doing music. Now tell me a little bit about, uh, you've had a few bands of course, but right. we'll talk about Simply Dylan. Yeah, yeah, Simply Dylan's kind of a new project. It's something that I started about five years ago and um, a, a friend of mine just said, why don't you do a, a Dylan gig um, with ju you know, just all Bob Dylan songs? I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good, all Bob Dylan. The whole set, but anyway, we, we, we did, what we done was uh, Bob Dylan turned seventy. Thought, okay, we'll do a gig to celebrate Bob Dylan's birthday and see how it goes. And it sold out on the cavern. So I thought, well, that was good, and it was a nice band as well. And of course, you've got your new band. Well, I say a new band. Yeah. You guys have been together, yeah. the uh, John O'Connell band. You've been yeah, together yeah. for quite a while now. Yeah. Well, this is Paul next to me, and on my left, it, I, I've been working with Paul since the eighties because Paul was the bass player with Graham Piggin along with our good friend Graham Evans. Graham passed away 12 years ago. So, and he was such a, you know, a charismatic person. That was the end of the band really when Graham went. I had to bring that to an end. Um, and uh, Lou is part of the Simply Dylan band. So I have, a, I work with a big network of musicians and they're all lovely, great to work with. Very talented. And Paul, you've got a wonderful uh, crowd here tonight. Great support in Liverpool. That's right. It's, it's Johnny gets a lot of support wherever he does. But uh, we're looking forward to playing here tonight. There's a lot of people out there. Yes. Now tell us a little bit about your role in the band. Well, I'm the bass player. I've um, been a bass player in a few of Johnny's bands, as he's just mentioned, uh, the 80s with Grand Pig with Green. Uh, I'm the bass player in Simply Dylan as well. Uh, and I'm, playing, I'm sharing bass duties tonight with uh, New Girl Helen. So is this like a home gig for you tonight? Uh, very much so. Um, I was, uh, I'm only from down the road, Everton. We're all from Everton. Yeah, I don't know where Lou's from, but uh, this is very much, although we don't live there anymore, this is very much a yeah. home gig. So Kenny, how long have you played with these guys? I've been playing in them now about 12 months, something like that. Started off about 12 months, started on a few pubs, and then I'd done the Philharmonic with Johnny on the Simply Dylan tour. So, would say you're like a new kid on the block. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, to, Barlow. <laughs> yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. Like, I play mandolin in the band and do back and vocals with Johnny. So I've been doing about 12 months, but we played together years ago in bands, you know, over the years. Now you play all around Liverpool? Yeah, a lot of the pubs in town, a um, couple of the theatres, he's done the Epstein Theatre, Philharmonic, stuff like that, you know. And I believe you've got some connections with Galway? Yeah, that's where the family come from many years ago, I think in the 1850s they come to Liverpool from Galway. <laughs> Now, Lou, uh, tell me a little bit about your role in the band. Um, well, I do back and vocals and do a few songs on my own as well um, with John. And I've been working with John from the beginning of Simply Dylan. 
and all that stuff. So it's, yeah. Fantastic. Are you looking forward to performing here tonight in front of a big crowd? Oh yeah, it's lovely. It's always nice to be in Liverpool. It's always a really good atmosphere. It's lovely. So obviously you, you guys know each other for a very long time and you've played together a long time and played lots of gigs. So it's great to see that you're all, you know, going really well. Yeah, and he keeps asking me back, which is a miracle. Yeah, he puts up with me and I have to put up with him. Yeah. Everyone had a great time and we look forward to catching up with John soon again. Now St Lawrence's GA Club in Manchester are preparing their underage team to travel over to Ireland to take part in a footballing weekend and we went along to meet them and see how the preparations were going. St Lawrence's GAA Club uh, are going to Mayo on the bank holiday weekend, the Easter weekend, with uh, the under 12 slash under 13s. And we're heading back to have a number of games on Good Friday, Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday, and Easter Monday. Uh, starting with Ahamore, uh, Brafey, and Claire Morris all going well on this Saturday. Lewisburg on the Sunday, and then the Monday fixture has got to be uh, confirmed yet. There's three other clubs that want to, want to entertain us, so it's all good. Well, it's going to be a very busy weekend for the boys, isn't it? But I'm sure they're all looking forward to it. Ah, they are. You can see the, the way they're preparing, their enthusiasm and their, their dedication to turning out. And not, you know, today's the best day. A couple of weeks ago, it wasn't great weather, and they turned out and they worked hard. And you can see the skill level, and they're working hard there in the background. And Yeah, they'll be a good crack, because over the weekend, it won't be just about football. It'll be about bonding and, and staying together and doing a little bit of activities and a bit of cracking. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be great, it'll be great for them, great for the club as well, for the future, to keep these lads together. Yeah, of course, uh, Brendan, St Lawrence is very uh, strong at underage. Yeah, we've always been quite strong at underage, Martin. It's something we've tried to uh, keep going in the club. Um, we sort of picked them up at under eights, uh, all the way through under tens, twelves, and obviously then try to get some of the lads involved in the county establishment for the fail as well. So it's, it's always been a strong under Lawrence's where we have a good underage, solid foundation, and try to keep them in turn into the senior and junior teams as well. Yeah, and of course I know that you've always been a big supporter of the GA here in Lancashire and did St Lawrence's but you know it's vitally important a bit of fundraising as well. Of course it is yeah we have a lot of good sponsorship uh, involved in the club we have a good strong committee uh, we have a lot of uh, as I say good sponsorship we've also got a lot of families who've links to Ireland who are happy to support us in the club but yeah uh, like everything Martin it's uh, it's uh, it costs money to put the jerseys up and to get the kits going so we're really uh, glad of any sponsorship uh, and everybody that's supported us over the years. Now, Vinton, you do a little bit of coaching as well. How do you like it? I do, yes. Uh, I love the coaching, yeah. Uh, it's just nice to stand back and uh, well, help the next generation uh, learn Gaelic football, just like I did when I was younger. Yeah. And do you think that the young boys respond to you more than, than your dad and Brendan here? Uh, well, I'm kind of new, so I'm still trying to fit in, but yeah, they do respond to me well, yeah. He's the only that? one with a whistle at the minute, Martin, so yeah. he's the boss. Oh, he's got yeah, the whistle. Yeah, he's got the whistle. Now are they all looking forward to going to Ireland, Tom? Yeah, they are, they are. And you know we're blessed because every one of the parents that are coming that the, of the children that are travelling are travelling over with us. So there's going to be a great group over there and I, I dare say it'll be a good social activity as well over that weekend. And we're lucky because so many of the parents that are involved with this group uh, have family or, or holiday homes in and around Clue Bay uh, in that area, so it's or, or towards Belmullet. So it's fantastic that we have that support. Now, Brendan, you've been involved with St Lawrence's for a very, very long time, but uh, how is it going here at St Lawrence's at the moment? It's going well, thank you, Martin. Yeah, uh, so we've got a good few kids. Uh, 93 last year in, in various age groups. We've got a girls' team going now as well, so it's great to see them all involved. 
Yeah, and how difficult is it now for St Lawrence to keep the underage going and the girls' teams going? It's it's a challenge that mine. It always, I think it always will be because um, uh, we're not in Ireland, obviously. But um, uh, you know, the kids who do come down, they bring the friends with them, and we've got the uh, the luxury of a of a, um, a guy who goes into the schools for us, CDA, uh, who works for the GAA here, and he we get kids through that way. How successful has that been with uh, taking the GEA to the schools and having it taught in the schools? Uh, does the clubs benefit much from that? Yeah, we, we, we do. We, um, I think what it does is where it raises a general awareness of, of the games and our culture uh, and all that um, side of things. And from that, we don't we don't get floods of kids, but we do get a steady trickle, so, and that's enough to keep us going. And the girls' team, tell me how they're doing. Yeah, we've a good range of girls' team. Uh, there's not obviously there's not as many girls as boys, uh, but the the ones who are very very dedicated. Um, th what we tend to have to do with them because there's not many games locally for them, we have to travel to London, Birmingham, Glasgow, places like that, and uh, we're, we're playing teams from all over the country. Of course, that takes a lot of dedication. It does. Yeah, it's good fun at the same time. Uh, they're all they're all a good laugh, so um, we we make the most of it. All the team are looking forward to their trip to Ireland and I'm sure they'll have a great time. Now it's time for us to take a quick break. Welcome back to the Irish in the UK. Now if you've got a story to tell us, contact me. The details are on the screen now. Now the Coventry Irish Society does wonderful work for the Irish people in Coventry and recently we went along to meet some of them. By the wild Irish road, the fairest flower that grows. Someday for my sake, she may let me paint the bloom of my wild Irish road. Coventry Irish Society was established in 1993. Uh, I've personally been involved for 15 years with the charity. And have you always had your luncheon clubs here at Christ the King? Uh, no, we've uh, varied the lunch clubs. Um, we've had them in different uh, Irish centres, Irish clubs and parishes, uh, hotels. Uh, it's gone across the city really. Uh, we like to vary them. Uh, at one point we had like nearly 300 people coming to them and now around to about 100. Now you've had a great turnout here today though and wonderful crowd in there and great music and everybody's enjoying themselves. Yeah, they're a fantastic crowd, a great crowd, uh, lovely people and they know how to have, uh, know how to have fun. They really, really are good people and um, they're having a great time. Now, uh, I met so many Irish people in there from County Galway. There must be all, all West of Ireland people here today. There's a lot of them, there's a lot of them and in Coventry it's well known for uh, having a lot of people from the West of Ireland, yeah. Now tell me a little bit about the Coventry Irish Society, what you do and uh, kind of other things that you've got coming up. Um, well we, uh, uh, we were set up to, um, our main purpose was to help the vulnerable Irish, the people who needed uh, uh, services and entitlements. We expanded into more general welfare services, everything from an Irish passport to pensions, uh, a lot of Irish pensions and we've got a strong cultural aspect to what we do, Irish festivals, we always do uh, St Patrick's Festival and we've had lots of cultural events and lots of befriending things. Uh, the lunch club here for example runs every maybe two months and um, so there's lots, uh, lots of promoting the culture but our main remit was around the welfare and that's with the support of the Emigrant Support Programme to do that with the funding. You know? And of course that's very, very important for all our Irish community here in Britain that we've got people like you that can lead the way and help people to fill in forms and generally guide them in the right direction. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, we, we're proud of our history of where we've helped a lot of people who wouldn't, the, the, the chances are they wouldn't have applied for things. And um, it's a question of they just feel more comfortable coming to an Irish centre. And we've, we've had the privilege of helping those uh, that great community that came here in, in post-war uh, Coventry, you know. Yeah. 
Well, like your own mum and dad, you were telling me earlier on, of course, your mum and dad come from Kerry and Limerick, and you were born here in Coventry. Yeah, I was born here in Coventry in uh, 1966, and uh, my father was from Kerry, uh, my mum's from Limerick City. My father was from a beautiful place, uh, Kenmare. Uh, it's fantastic on the ring of Kerry, and uh, I've just we've always had a strong Irish community. Uh, I grew up with uh, loads of Irish families around us, a uh, big Irish community, uh, and uh, it's big in Coventry. You know, th it's the highest per capita in the country, really, for Irish people. You know, so the different second and third generations. Now, I believe you also run a dementia club. Yeah, we, we run a dementia group uh, every uh, once a week, uh, half day a week, and we have six regular attendees to that. Uh, it's, it's gradually expanding. That's a big issue for the ageing Irish population, and to provide a culturally sensitive service to the, the Irish community like that, it's fantastic, you know. Now, Simon, can you tell me a little bit about Irish Hearts Coventry Home? Uh, well, this is a project, it's an oral history project funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund, and we've interviewed uh, 65 Irish people who came here between 1940 and 1970. This is now transformed into a major exhibition down at the Herbert Museum, the main art gallery in Coventry, and there'll be a film, 30 minute film. Uh, photographs and items, different objects that people brought with them and uh, interest. So it's really the ma about the legacy of the Irish and the contribution of the Irish. It's, it's a huge uh, thing for the city. When is that taking place, Simon? Uh, the launch is on the 9th of March. Between 6 and 8 it's inv invite only and from 8pm uh, it's open to the public and we're going to have a night of Irish music, dancing, poetry and theatre and it's going to be a, a fantastic uh, occasion. It's on for one month from uh, 9th of March to the 10th of April this year. Great stuff. Now tell me, before we let you go, Simon, I know you need to get indoors, your summer ball. What's happening with that? Uh, that's a, a annual summer ball. It's on the 30th of June uh, at the Village Hotel. And that's a, an event where we bring all the Irish community together, as many as possible, to highlight the profile of the Irish society and uh, try and make uh, networking and uh, get people to support the society. and find out ways which we can support them as well. PJ, how long have you been in Coventry? I've been here since I was 19 and I've been here ever since. I've had a good life in Coventry. I class it as my second home, but anybody ever asked me I always refer to Ireland as home. Where do you come from in Ireland? I come from Blinamaddy. A uh, place made famous by Big Tom with the four country roads. And uh, I'm very proud of that. And of course you've got a, a strong Irish community here in Coventry down the years. We have, yes. Uh, but unfortunately it's dying out. All the first generation of Irish people now are passing away very fast. And it's a sad uh, state where the second generation are really not interested in, in, in our sort of um, celebrations of Ireland. And uh, I, feel sorry, I feel very sad about that. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, these things happen. Now, Lily, of course, you come from Dublin. Yes. But tell me about, when did you meet PJ? I met PJ in the Galway Arms in Dublin and I was going with him for two years and then he came over to England and Father Burke in St Mary's Church in Coventry sent a letter to my father to say that he had found me digs if I, he, my father would allow me to come over to PJ for two weeks all day but I didn't go back. It was the longest holiday on earth. I'm still here. <laughs> I never went back. And Lily, tell me a little bit about your time here in Coventry. Well, I worked at Dunlop, and then I went on, I'm a printer by trade. I worked in Alec Toms in Dublin, and I got my papers from there. But I went to work in a company, Carter Halls, 
in Hillfields. And the director of that firm was Norman Wisdom. The other partner, they owned it, uh, a brick box in uh, Bedworth and it was called uh, Ch Charity Brick Box. And they were in partnership with one another, Norman Wisdom and John Carter. Okay. And where used to go dancing? We used to go to the, the Irish Centre in Birmingham. We went to uh, the Bamba. Look, congratulations to you both. 59 years together, well done. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I come here in 1973. Um, the work wasn't very good over there. Even though my husband was a carpenter and qualified as a carpenter, and they, there was nothing going for us over there. There was no work as such. He, he, he was working, but things weren't great, you know. So, and then of course the trouble had started and everything else. And I was at my mum's, and she said she, because I had three brothers in Coventry and a sister, and they said, you know, why don't you? Just we didn't just move across the water, so we just took our word for it, like, you know. But we've never looked back, you know. And John, before you moved to Coventry, of course, you and Anne got married in Derry, I believe. Yes, that's right, yeah. We were married in the Waterside Chapel in Derry. And where did you meet Anne? Uh, we met at the uh, Golden Slipper Ballroom in McGilligan. That's in County Derry. Was that a big dancing club? Yes, a fairly big one, yes. Now, I believe you're a big John McNichol fan. Yes, I like John McNichol, yeah. He comes from near, near where I come from in Ireland. Very good. Now, Anne, tell me about the, the Irish here in Coventry. Like, is there much going on with the Irish pubs and clubs now in Coventry? Well, there is, but there could be more, you know, now. But we've got St. Patrick's Day come up, so we'll be coming alive like then, you know. And we've also got, we've got the Clatter Group on Tuesday, and we've got a friendship group on a Wednesday. So we've been offered the Christ the King. We've also been offered the Finbars, which was very good. Yeah, um, Saint Finbars GA yeah. Club. Yes, and it'll just be, you know, a choice, like, you know, so. Well, look, at you're doing really well to keep all these groups going here in Coventry. So you're all working yeah. so hard behind the scenes and yeah. well done to you all. We hope you've all enjoyed the last half hour and weren't they great fun in Coventry, mad for dancing and a bit of fun. We hope to see them soon again. Now Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with the Irish at home and abroad and I'm here at half past 7 with the Irish in the UK. Don't forget both shows are repeated every Saturday evening between 8 and 9pm. Until next week, take care.